Okay, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about the charge function of the NC2500 Pro. Specifically, we want to discuss about step charge. I find that the step charge is particularly useful for us racers especially especially if you have to charge your batteries and then you have to wait for your turn. So, I'm just going to demonstrate to you what what happens on a regular batteries that you charge, like regular, normal, normal. So, I'm just going to put it in these two middle slots, no particular slots, but just for the sake of demonstration, I want to show you what happens when you charge. Okay, I have figured out some of the basic settings here after much testing with it and I found that we do not ever need the timer function and we do not ever need the trickle current function you use timer and trickle current only if you plan to leave your batteries charged so this normally applies for other people not for mini 4 for example you uh, would use it for photography equipment like a camera flash for example so you would want to set a timer to cut off how long you before the charger really really stops charging and for trickle current to continuously top off uh, when the, bat uh, the battery gradually discharge on its own every battery have its own discharge so for racing, we are not interested in that. So, my recommended settings is just leave your timer off and leave your trickle charge, uh, trickle current off. Okay, as for Delta Peak, uh, the charger has a built in uh, detection system that it will cut off the charge when it has a difference in 5 millivolts. So, the recommended settings again is between 1 to 5. If you feel that your battery is very unstable, you can set it to more than 5, which is the maximum of 8. But for racing purpose, like I said, we would normally just set as short as possible because we just want to hit peak and then just terminate quickly. Or as the default recommended value, which is 5 millivolts. So after that's out of the way, I'm just going to briefly show you what happens on a normal charge. These batteries have been pre-charged yesterday, so you should expect to see the charge goes quickly in about 2 minutes. First round, there's no step charge. Let's begin. Okay, as you can see, after it is done, it will start stop charging and take note at the voltage. If you have not watched, check out my previous video on whether this voltage is accurate and how fast it drains once you're taken off from the charger. Let's just observe this for a moment and you would see that actually in a few seconds, it dropped from 157 or 156 to about 151 or 150 where it starts to slow down. In most situations, this is ideal. But remember, in racing, not right now, this is done and you're waiting. This is going to keep uh, dropping and dropping and dropping and until it will eventually plateau at around 14 something. I cannot remember, but um, based on my experience, it's normally around 146, it will start to plateau. So, after a few minutes talking to you, you realize that it has dropped to 149. So, it will keep continue dropping and dropping until you are ready to use. But then, you would have lost a little bit of the power that you need in order to win your race, for example. 
So this is a example of a regular charge. So now I'm going to talk about step charge and how you can use it to your advantage and what is its function. So I'm not going to use this battery anymore because it's quite warm now. So as usual, batteries get warm when they are full charge. So I'm going to just leave it, take this out and I'm going to put in another set of batteries that I have charged yesterday. Okay. Make sure you push in your batteries in. Uh. Okay. Now we're going to enable step charge. Okay, what is step charge? Okay, basically how how to read this? First, it will always start with the charge current that you set here. So in this example, we're going to set it to 2.5 amp. At what capacity of charge it will go to step two? So once it hit a hundred ma charge, it will go to step two. So it will change to from 2,500 milliamp to 1,000 milliamp, and then at what cap it will change to step three. So if you set step one and step two under the same cap, basically you can ignore step two. Okay, so you look at step one and step three only. Okay, step one is the charge rate that you are interested in. In this example, I'm going to set it to 2.5 M and I'm going to cut off at 100 ma because from my experience, I noticed that roughly around 100 to 200 ma, it should stop uh, charging anyway. You can you can rewind this video and look at the previous one uh, just now when it was charging. It was charging at around 200 ma and then it starts to stop. So this value set to 100 or 200 in this example i'm just going to set to 100 i'm just going to show you if you set this to 200 this one means once it hit 100 it changed to this charge rate and then it will continue to charge until 200 then it goes to this charge rate okay but what happened if i change this one this one will follow because this is basically saying okay i hit 200 mark charge already so now I'm going to go to step 2. But if your step 2 is still 200, it's going to skip your step 2 and go to step 3. I hope I made myself clear for this. So the point is I'm going to say is that step 1, if you set step 1 and step 2 same cap, you ignore step 2, you should go to step 3. For step 3, you can set to any charge rate you want, but it does not make sense for you to set to 2005, which is basically like, okay, I hit 1 amount, let's go to 2.5 m again no point so what you want to set this to is to the lowest value normally 100 or 200 in my personal testing i would use 100 or 200 depending on how much you want to abuse your battery in this particular example i'm just going to set to 100 okay so we're going to start this and you're going to see the difference of how is this different compared to the regular charging let's start now Okay, so it will start off at 2.5 amps and then look at this one. Once this hit 100, it will straight away change to 0 0.5 amps. So I'm going to fast forward and wait for this to hit 100. Okay, we are now at 95 ma. Observe what happened to here once it hit 100. Okay, here yeah, he's 100. So, once it hit 100, it will change to 0 0.1 M. Now, observe the voltage. So, in a regular charge, if you charge this to full, what will happen is it will stop the charging and this one will drain very quickly. But because this is still charging, it will not stop the charging and it will continue to supply current to it 
like as though it's a trickle charge but trickle charge is not the same as this method this method basically you telling the charger hey once i hit 100 ma charging at 2.5 m set the current to whatever current you want to set so in this case i set to 0 0.1 so you try to continue charging like this and based on my short experiment i do not know when it will stop maybe the heat will stop the uh, will terminate the charge right now it won't terminate and it will just continue charging and it will just maintain a charge to the battery right before you need to use it so that's a quick example for you to use it so if you are for example you are now waiting for your turn for example you are racing you would charge at 2.5 because maybe your turn is the next few turns uh, next few uh, minutes so as quickly as you want to go up then you set your step 3 to maybe a thousand or thousand five where it is not as fast as 2.5 so you won't uh, hit the battery too quickly and you can maintain a higher charge rate 0 0.1 m in this example is not that great because you can see it will just drop as as though it is stopped charging but it's not it's still charging at a very very slow rate which is not recommended you would set to maybe uh I, my recommended values would be between 500 to 1500 obviously you don't set to 2.5 lah because you already set your initial charge as 2.5 so this this mode allows you to remain charged at a lower m so at least you have like for example now it's elapsed for five minutes so you know at the end of five minutes you have a readily charged battery ready to go so you will always be in full power whenever you need them so just to recap if it was me i would set this to 1005 because in my experience between uh for our battery here our regular race, racing batteries they can take up to 1000 to 1005 without really overheating or damaging the battery as well 2.5 is really if you want to quickly pump a lot of energy to it then once it hit the 100 ma mark which is what we have observed between 100 or 200 ma then kick in this charge rate so at least when the time you need to go your battery is always ready to go okay that's it for today i hope you find this information useful good luck keep on running don't forget to follow and subscribe to my channel do like and share and we'll see you in the next video ciao